an aging population, and not enough babies. China's seventh national census lays bare the demographic time bomb facing the world's second biggest economy. Oh, China is in its post-COVID phase and it's ready to take on the world. President Xi has ambition to double the size of China's economy by the middle of the next decade. China has for centuries, possibly even longer, been the world's most populated country. This has, no doubt, given them a leg up in the course of history, as having more manpower has always led to the progressiveness of a nation's military, economy, and cultural power. To this day, the nation even boasts architectural feats that ooze their manpower prowess. I'm looking at you, Great Wall of China. However, things have taken a turn in the last half century from not wanting to increase the population due to various concerns, to now wanting the population to grow again due to different concerns. It might sound a bit confusing, but I promise you, this continuously growing population problem that China has is well worth knowing. If you're wondering what population problem has the Chinese government in a panic, then you have the right video. By the end of this, you will understand the roots, the current predicament, and the future problems that China faces, and why exactly its age problems are getting worse. China is the world's second biggest economy. At present, China is almost single-handedly responsible for the consumption of many of the world's commodities, including integrated circuits, crude oil, and iron ore. A lot of China's progress has come on the heels of its massive population and the way it has taken advantage of it in the past. Let's do a brief history dive for context. Before the 1978 reforms that we shall discuss later in the video, nearly four in five Chinese worked in the agricultural sector. And yet by 1994, only one in two did. Reforms expanded property rights in the countryside and touched off a race to form small non-agricultural businesses in rural areas. De-collectivization and higher prices for agricultural products also led to more productive family farms and more efficient use of labor. Together, these forces induced many workers to move out of agriculture. The resulting rapid growth of village enterprises then drew tens of millions of people from traditional agriculture into higher value added manufacturing. It was here that the industrial age of China began to boom. Over that period, the country underwent a shift from a largely agrarian society to an industrial powerhouse. In the process, it's seen sharp increases in productivity and wages that have allowed China to become the world's second largest economy. The large working population that it had had now contributed to these labor-intensive manufacturing and food-producing industries that saw the nation grow into an economic powerhouse. But the same breath that brought about these reforms brought others that have now caused a crippling effect on the future of the nation. And now, the workforce that built the industrial sectors is slowly becoming its largest burden. What do I mean? Let me explain further. Concurrent with its change from an agricultural society to an industrial one, China was also facing a huge problem – population. Though in the present state, it served excellently as labor in the manufacturing industries. The growth rate was unsustainable. Between the 1940s and late 70s, the country was on pace to double its already substantial half a billion population. To curb this, the government introduced certain reforms to try and slow down the population growth in the nation. The most widely known and most effective was the one-child policy. It was introduced in 1980 mainly to reduce the number of hungry mouths to feed. Under this policy, families were limited to having one child. As a result of the one-child policy, birth rates fell and this continued on for the decades that followed, sparking a new cultural trend whose ramifications China has started to feel in the past two decades. We will touch more on these in just a few minutes. The policy, now a hitch on growth in this new era, prompted Beijing to permit parents to have two children from 2016. This became known as the two-child policy. In May 2021, the Chinese government announced it would scrap the two-child policy in favor of a three-child policy, allowing couples to have three children to mitigate the country's now falling birth rates. The result of China's population control policies is that the birth rate has drastically fallen, 
obviously, but the key takeaway is that this has resulted in a disproportionate age structure where the incoming youth are far outnumbered by the aging workers and retirees. This means that China has an aging population, with fewer youths to replenish the workforce. Despite 2016 sparking an 8% increase in birth rate, no doubt from women who had waited years to be able to have a second child, China's birth rate has fallen every year since. In 2020, the birth rate fell from an additional 15% to record a dismal 10 million births. This low birth rate just can't seem to find a bottom, and it comes with a long list of problems, chief among them being an aging population. This aging population issue comes associated with a whole host of problems, ones we will dive into in a minute. Have you clicked the link in the description below the video and signed up for Webull? If you haven't, do so and benefit from two free stocks that you will receive to add to your portfolio. Now, back to the problems of China's aging population. The aging of the current population coupled with the low birth rate has had multiple effects that have ricocheted throughout the economy. Let's go over the most critical of these. 1. Insufficient labor force the latest China census showed an increase in population from 1.4 to 1.414 billion between 2010 and 2020. This was a 5.1% increase, the slowest growth rate ever since they began taking the census decades back. China has been put in a place where the key demographic is quickly aging without sufficient youngsters to replenish the workforce. This means that as people retire from their jobs, there are vacancies that are left that cannot be filled, and hence shortages and slowed economic activity. The sector that is hit the hardest by this labor shortage has been the manufacturing industry, as there is not enough manpower to man the industries in comparison to the past. Certain analysts have argued that there's not so much a universal labor shortage as there is a mismatch in labor. The younger generation is shying away from manual jobs like farming and industrial work, which make up a significant part of the economy. This, therefore, leaves a gaping hole in the labor pool. China has started to try and address this problem by moving towards technological trends and trying to use technology and innovation to supplement the industrial sector. Basically, China is trying to transition the economy from being labor-intensive to a technological one. But it's key to note that the industrial sector constitutes 38% of the overall economy, and until full automation, the labor shortages will be felt. Labor shortages aren't the full scope of problems that come with China's population age problem. Other factors exist that are equally as puzzling to solve for the government. Number 2. Workforce versus Retirees According to a report, citizens over 60 years of age in 2021 exceeded 254 million, constituting around 18% of the population. Projections show that by 2025, that number would be 300 million. Come 2035, the number of citizens 60 years and above in China will be 400 million, a whopping 25% of the population. Since men in China retire at 60, with women having retired at 55, what this means is that this whole portion of the population will be retired individuals that are not actively contributing to the economy. Analysts have stated that the demographic dependency ratio, which is a measure of the dependence to a society's total working population, would go from 47% in 2019 to 96% in 2050. What this effectively means is that in the not-so-distant future of China, for every one retiree, there will be one working person. This discrepancy in the number of the working population and the number of dependents will apply pressure to the PRC's economic system. This means that extra burdens will be placed on the benefits and the healthcare system, resulting in increased costs. Current estimates state that in 2027, retirement funds will peak at 7 trillion yuan, but then go to zero by 2035 due to the number of dependents increasing. As a result, a notable deficit will be felt between its inflows and expenses monetary-wise, and by 2050, the deficit will be in the trillions of yuans. The difficulties in maintaining the liquidity of the pension system are forcing the government to take extreme measures, like attempting to encourage more births and increasing the retirement age. More on that in just a minute. Number 3. Genders Imbalance and Related Problems Unlike the two factors above, this one is not a direct result of the aging problem plaguing the old man of Asia, but because it's directly related to the previous policies regarding population control. I must mention it here. 
China is plagued by an extreme gender imbalance as it has far more males than females in the country. This gender imbalance comes from the abortion-oriented policies that favored male offspring over female ones. According to the 7th National Population Census conducted in 2020, there are about 35 million more males than women. This comes with a whole host of social and cultural issues. One of them is the so-called communities of men without families that have increased due to this surplus of males. Here, a lot of unmarried and uncommitted men just gather and spend time together in groups. This is associated with an increase in crime in the nation. Another problem that comes due to the gender imbalance is the high competition in marriage for the few females available. Chinese matchmakers always have more men than women, which means a lot of men go unmarried into old age. This further creates a disproportion in the birth rate and it has also resulted in the thriving of online communities where young men spend money on females to find closure and comfort. The reality of the situation is that China has an aging population and that's causing various problems across all sectors. With the young generation unable to support the older generation, the aging population of the country is becoming a heavy strain on the economy and all projections show that the problem will only get worse going into the future. Despite the heavy relaxation of population control measures, the effects the policies had have not been reversed. At present, despite the country having a three-child policy, barely any people take advantage of this. When interviewed, most people named financial pressures as the reason why they did not have more children. This stems from the fact that most in the current working population have the 4 to one problem. This is used to describe the burden on children to take care of both sets of grandparents plus the parents. With such responsibilities, many are hesitant to have multiple children as that will mean sharing the few available resources they have to spare among various individuals. China is faced with hard decisions at this turn of the decade. They will have to make tough decisions to preserve the economy. On one hand, the active retirement laws are outdated as they are from 1950 and they need to be changed as they are heavily disconnected from the current reality. In a country where the average death age is 76.7 years, having a 55 and 60 year age retirement for women and men respectively simply isn't feasible. However, simply changing this would present a problem, as the scores of college students graduating would not find as many job vacancies given that most would be retained by the older generation. This has resulted in the government getting heavy backlash from both the retirees who state that they will be unable to do labor-intensive work past 60 and the younger generation who are fearful of lost job opportunities whenever the subject is brought up. China does not have a simple way out of the current dilemma. Every single option comes with its risks and only time will tell what the government will choose to do. One thing is for sure though, China has a problem that needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed quickly. With the decades rolling, what we will soon see is an age of unprecedented decline in China due to the population aging problems.